Texas Quality Assurance Officer Sean McAllister on board the Fremont Ore Processing Space Station reporting to Earth HQ. There has been a terrible accident. We are in need of emergency assistance. Most of the crew are dead. It's just myself and Andy Reynolds left. An explosion in the main ore processing unit caused a massive chemical fire which led to large quantities of poisonous gas infiltrating the air supply system. It was late, so the rest of the crew were asleep in the crew quarters and succumbed to the fumes in their sleep. They didn't stand a chance. Reynolds was caught in the explosion and is now in a coma due to his injuries, mainly head trauma. He's in a bad way. I don't know if he'll make it. The explosion damaged the fire suppression units in the area, making it necessary to put the fire out manually. I was conducting inventory checks in the nearby storage bay when it happened, and so it was close enough to get there fairly quickly, but it happened so fast. After grabbing a gas mask, I, I pulled Reynolds to safety and then proceeded to deal with the fire, but it took quite some time to get it under control and put it out. I was so focused on the immediate crisis that I didn't realize the potential danger to the rest of the crew until it was too late. If only I could have assessed the situation more quickly or been able to put the fire out faster. I don't know. Maybe I could have done something to save them. It's been three weeks since the accident. Reynolds hasn't woken up and his condition is deteriorating. I'm not a doctor. My medical knowledge is limited. There's only so much I can do. I, I don't know how much longer he has. I'm still awaiting instructions and word on when a rescue ship might arrive. There have been solar flares recently, so it's possible that it's interfering with the signal getting through to Earth. Our required bi-weekly report was due to go out a week ago. So it's likely that they know something's not quite right by now. Thankfully, the solar flare shouldn't last too much longer, and I'm confident I will be hearing from HQ very soon. It's been nearly three months since the accident occurred. Reynolds passed away more than a month ago. Still no word from HQ. I have no idea if my messages are getting through. I don't know, maybe the antenna ray has been damaged or, or is malfunctioning, but the diagnostics don't seem to indicate any issues. And we haven't had any recent debris encounters. And visually, everything looked fine when I did a recent spacewalks. Still, Peterson was the communications expert. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. HQ has to know there's some kind of problem by now. And I'm sure they'll be sending help very soon if they haven't already. Five months. Still nothing. I have to believe that they're coming for me. I don't know if or when you'll ever see this, Jennifer. But I wanted to let you know that I've been thinking of you every day. I know you didn't want me to re-up for another assignment out here to be away again for so long. But like I assured you then, the payout for the job will be worth it. It'll be the last time I'll never have to do it again. And I'll never have to be apart again. Do you remember that time we went hiking in Colorado? And you lost your balance and fell in the stream. And I teased you. And you responded by pulling me in with you. And we laughed and kissed. And, and shortly after, we reached that clearing that opened up to that gorgeous, breathtaking view. And we just drank it all in and embraced while the warm sun dried us off. We should go back there again. When I get back. 
Maybe we could build a cabin up there. You know, our, our own little retreat from the world. That would be nice, don't you think? Yes, we should do that. I can't wait to see you again. To be in your arms, to touch you, to feel your warmth. Soon. Soon. I'm sure they'll be here for me very soon. To bring me home again. Six and a half months. <laughs> Managed to get the latest ore transport ship loaded up and launched back to Earth. More or less on schedule. Thank goodness the mining is mostly automated. As long as nothing breaks down, I don't have to do all that much. I included copies of the video logs on the transport. So if they're not receiving my communications, they'll definitely know what's happened once they get the transport. I tried to rig, I tried to figure out a way to, to rig a, uh, some kind of compartment that could safely hold me for the duration of the journey, but no luck. Uh, given that these transport ships aren't designed for humans, only cargo, I couldn't figure out a way to provide enough oxygen and shielding to enable me to survive the journey. Huh. Montoya probably could have figured it out. She was quite the engineer. No. I'll just have to wait. Have faith that once they see the video logs, they'll waste no time in sending a rescue. As of now, I'm in no danger of starving anytime soon. But just knowing they're on their way would make the isolation more bearable. Eighteen months. Still no word from HQ. Nothing. I don't think anyone is coming. I'm on my own. I don't want to die out here alone. Not like this. Am I so expendable? <laughs> don't have to pay any of us if we're not alive. can't end like this. Not when I was so close to a better life. I'm so sorry, Jennifer. It's my fault. I didn't mean to. It really was an accident. If only Reynolds hadn't interfered. Hadn't so foolishly, impulsively tried to destroy it. It was going to set us up for life, Jennifer. For life. And trilotite. I, I figured out a way to grow in trilotite crystals. Oh, almost. Close enough to nearly be identical and nearly as valuable. Two of the three minerals uh, in, involved at the formation of natural entrilotite are fairly common in the ore that we, we mine and process here. And, and I figured out a chemical solution that closely approximated that third rare mineral. Mix it in for, with some liquefied ore byproduct containing the other two minerals, and voila! Instant substitute entrilotite, slowly growing right before my eyes. I would have cut him in a little, if that's what he wanted. It was more than enough. More than I, more than we needed. But that stick in the mud pompously going on about how I had no permission to build and grow, build and house a grow station. How the chemicals I were using was, were so potentially dangerous. <laughs> I knew what I was doing. I'm a chemist as well as a geologist. Took all the necessary precautions. There was little danger. And there was 
plenty of extra space in the storage bays, and it didn't interfere with my regular duties. So what did it matter? Calling me reckless. He was the reckless one. It wasn't enough for him to report me. No, no, he had to try and destroy my work right then and there. The arrogance. I had to stop him. I tried to stop him from destroying our best chance at real freedom. It was his own fault. He hit his head in the ensuing struggle. I, I didn't mean for that to happen. If he had so cruelly, it was his own fault. The damage he caused, the explosion. I desperately tried to salvage my work, but it was too late. It happened too fast. And I nearly succumbed to the fumes. Maybe I should have let him die right there instead of pulling him to safety. He did eventually anyways. Maybe I should have let myself succumb to the fumes. Maybe I'd be better off now. But I didn't want to die. And I thought I could fix things somehow. I don't want to die. But no communications, no fresh supplies. They've left me out here to die. Sorry. I'm so sorry.